In this video, I will talk about the types of data. We have four types, cross-sectional data, time series data, pooled cross-sections and panel data. As this is a basic course, so I am not going to discuss pooled cross-sections and panel data with you. We will mostly deal with cross-sectional data. So most of the examples that I am going to give you will correspond to cross-sectional data. However, I am also going to give you a quick overview of time series data in this particular lecture. I will not take many examples related to time series data. I'll just take maybe a couple of examples here and there. Okay. So our main focus is going to be cross-sectional data. So let's understand what do we mean by cross-sectional data. Cross-sectional data is data on different entities for a single time period. There are three things that we need to discuss over here. The first thing is the meaning of entities over here. Well, entities could be individuals, households, firms, cities, states, countries and so forth. What is going to be an entity in a particular question depends on what is it that we are talking about. Okay. The main thing that you have to keep in mind is that when we are dealing with cross-sectional data, we have different entities. So entities are allowed to vary, but the time period is not allowed to vary. That is, we have single time period. Let me give you an example so that you can understand this in detail. So let's say we are collecting data on expenditure on food. So one of the variables that we are interested in is expenditure on food. And let's say the other variable is income. So let's say we are interested in the relationship between income and expenditure on food. And that's why we are collecting the data on these two variables. And let's say that for this particular purpose, we have randomly selected 500 households. So these are the households which are going to help us with the data. And we have selected these households randomly. Instead of writing the word households, I'm just going to write HH as the abbreviation. So now that we have selected these 500 households randomly, now we are going to visit each of these households one by one and we will ask them to help us with this information. Okay, so we are going to ask them that what is their expenditure on food and what is their income. So now imagine that we go to household number one. So I'm writing household number one as HH1. And for this particular exercise, imagine that you are the household number one and I am coming to your home to collect this data from you. Now, once I'm at your home, I'm going to ask you what is your expenditure on food and what is the income that you earn. Now for this question to be a sensible question, I have to mention some specific time period. For example, I can ask you the expenditure on food and income for the last month. I can ask you the expenditure on food and income for the last quarter. I can also ask you the expenditure on food and income for the year 2019. But whatever it is, I have to mention a specific time period so that you could give me the answer according to that particular time period. Right? In this particular example, let's say we are interested in the relationship between expenditure on food and income in the year 2019. So while we are collecting the data, we are going to ask the households to provide us the information related to the year 2019. So when I go to household number one, I will ask them what was their expenditure on food in the year 2019 and what was their income in the year 2019. And we are going to get some numbers over here. Okay. Now, I'm not writing numbers over here. Instead of writing the numbers, I'm putting an abbreviation over here. And the abbreviation that I'm using is this. So, C1, 2019. C1, 2019 means consumption of household 1 in the year 2019. And over here, instead of writing the number, I'm writing I1, 2019. I1, 2019 means income of household 1 in the year 2019. Okay. In real life, when you're going to collect the data, you will obviously have some numbers over here. So after collecting the data from the household number one, we are moving to household number two. So HH2. Now we are going to ask the same question to the household number two, right? We cannot ask the household number two a different question because our purpose is to collect the data for the year 2019 on these two variables. So we are going to ask the household number two the same question that we asked the household number one. So when we ask the household number two the same question, even they will give us some numbers, right? And I'm not writing the numbers over here. I'm putting some abbreviation and it is C2, 2019. 
C2, 2019 means consumption of household number 2 in the year 2019 and over here I am writing I2, 2019. This means income of household number 2 in the year 2019. Similarly, we are going to visit household number 3 and we will ask them the same question. They will give us some data. So I am writing C3, 2019 and the abbreviation means consumption of household number 3 in the year 2019. And over here, I'm writing I3, 2019. So similarly, we are going to go to household number 4. We will ask them for some data. And then we will keep on going like this. And in the end, we will go to household number 500 and we will ask them for this data. So over here, we will have C500, 2019. This abbreviation means consumption of household 500 in the year 2019. And over here, I'm writing I500, 2019. So this is the kind of data that we have collected. In real life, you will not have these abbreviations. Obviously, you will have some numbers over here. Now, in this particular example that I have taken, can you think what are the entities? Well, the entities in this particular example are the households. So we have data on different entities. That means in this particular case, we have data on different households. We have data on 500 households. So households is your entity in this particular example. And we have data on single time period. Why am I saying that we have data on single time period? Because we have collected the data for the year 2019. Note that when I say single time period, it's not necessary that you have to collect yearly data. You can also collect quarterly data or monthly data. So in this particular example, I could have also asked the households what is their expenditure on food and income in the first month of 2019. Okay. And the reason I have written this abbreviation is because it becomes easier to take a look at this. So if you see over here, this 1, 2, 3 and this 500, these numbers, that is the first thing in the subscript is denoting the household number. So as you can see, the households are varying in this particular data set. It's going from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and then so on till 500. But the time period is not varying. Okay, so the time period is fixed. So the first subscript was for the household number and the second subscript was for the time period. Similarly, even for the income variable, we have done the same thing that the first subscripts are varying because the households are varying but the second subscript that is the time period it is not varying so we have a single time period okay and these type of data are called cross-sectional data so once again you have data on different entities for a single time period and as i told you in the beginning of this lecture in this particular course we are mostly going to deal with cross-sectional data so let me give you one more example for the cross-sectional data just to make sure that you understand this properly so this is example number two and let's say in this particular example we are collecting data on 50 states so we are collecting data on 50 states for the year 2008 and let's say the variables on which we are collecting the data are gdp and unemployment note that it's not necessary that you have to collect data on two variables you can collect data on as many variables as you want so there are no restrictions on the number of variables. If you want, you can also collect data on inflation. So basically you collect data on all the variables that you think are relevant to your study. So in this particular example, I'm only collecting data on two variables, which are GDP and unemployment. So first I will write the data that I get from state number one. So for the state number one, I will have some GDP value in the year 2008, which I'm going to write over here. And I will have some unemployment value in the year 2008, which I'm going to write over here. After we have data for the state number one, we can collect the data from the state number two. Then from the state number two, we will have the GDP figure for the year 2008 and we will have the unemployment figure for the year 2008. Similarly, we can collect the data from state number three. Once again, we will have the GDP figure from the year 2008 and the unemployment figure from the year 2008. And we can go on like this and in the end, we will collect the data from the state number 50. And we will have the GDP figure from the year 2008 and the unemployment figure from the year 2008. Once again, in this particular year, we have data on different entities for a given time period. In this particular example, the entities are states. Okay, so we have data on 50 different states for a single time period and that time period is the year 2008. Okay, so I hope you understand the meaning of cross-sectional data now. Now, before I move to time series data, there is one last thing that I want you to keep in mind. 
basically while dealing with the cross sectional data the ordering of the observations does not matter so think of it in this manner let's say that the state number 1 is alaska okay so that is our state number 1 and let's say the state number 2 in this particular example is california let's say the state number 3 is florida and so on now, what I mean is that it does not matter which state you call state number one. I mean, it's not necessary that Alaska has to be state number one. If you want, you can also call California as the state number one and Alaska as the state number two. So if you want, you can take this row, which has the numbers for the California state. You can write this row over here and you can write the first row at the second place. So it doesn't matter in which order you're writing these states. Okay, so let me write it over here as well that the ordering of the observations so the ordering does not matter okay so this is all about cross-sectional data now let's move to time series data in the case of time series data we have data for a single entity collected at multiple time periods so in cross-sectional data we have data on different entities over a single period of time in time series data, we have data for a single entity collected at multiple time periods. So let's take an example to understand this in detail. So let's say we are collecting the data on expenditure on food. So once again, we have expenditure on food over here. And the second variable is income. Okay. So in this particular case, we will not have 500 different households. We will just have a single household. I can call it HH1. And we will collect data for this single household at multiple time periods. So the first observation could look something like this. So we have consumption data on household number one for the year, let's say 2008 and income of household number one for the year 2008. So this is the first observation. The second observation could be that we once again have the data on household number one, but this time we have the data for the year 2009. So this is the consumption of household number one for the year 2009. And this is the income of household number one for the year 2009. Once again, instead of writing the numbers, I'm just writing the abbreviations over here. Similarly, the third observation could be, so once again, we have data on household number one, and now this could be for the year 2010. So consumption of household number one in the year 2010 and income of household number one in the year 2010. So this is your third observation. Note that over here, the household is not varying. We are collecting the data on the same household at multiple time periods. So in the first observation, we have data on household number one. In the second observation, we have data on household number one. In the third observation, we have data on household number one. Similarly, we can keep on going like this and in the end, we will again have data on household number one and let's say over here we have data for 2020. So this is consumption of the household for the year 2020 and this is income of the household for the year 2020. So these are the different observations that we have now and in these different observations, we are just talking about a single entity and that single entity in this particular case is household number one. And over here, we have multiple time periods. So if you see this abbreviation, the first subscript is not varying because the first subscript stands for household number. So we are talking about the same household, but now the time period is varying. Okay, so it was 2008, 2009, 2010, and this is going on till 2020. So these type of data are called time series data. We can take one more example over here. So we can collect data on Alaska at multiple time periods. So even that would be time series data. So we can have two columns over here, GDP and unemployment. And if you want, you can add more columns for the variables. It's not necessary that you have to work with two variables. And now if I collect the data on Alaska, so Alaska and over here, we write the number related to 2008. So this is for the year 2008. Okay, so these two numbers are for the year 2008. Then again, 
we can collect data on Alaska in the year 2009 and we can write the numbers over here. Then again, we can collect data on Alaska in the year 2010 and we can write the numbers over here and we can go on like this. Okay. So even this is a time series data, even in this case, we are working with a single entity. The entity in this particular example is Alaska and we have data on that at multiple time periods. Okay. So this is what your time series data is. Now, before I end this lecture, there is one last thing that I want you to keep in mind. Unlike the cross-sectional data, in time series data, the ordering of the observations matters. And let's understand why is this the case. Basically, now I cannot take this observation from here and put this observation over here. The data that I have collected in the year 2010, I cannot keep it as my first observation. The first observation has to be 2008 and then it has to be followed by 2009. So basically while dealing with time series data, you cannot change the ordering of the observations. You have to process your data in a particular order. Okay. This was not the case when we were dealing with cross-sectional data. In case of cross-sectional data, it doesn't matter which state or which household you write first. But in the case of time series data, there is a particular order that you have to follow. So this is all about cross-sectional data and time series data.